What's up, everyone? It is Sunday night, and we are at Bat City, which means it's time to wind down your weekend. As always, I'm Shannon, a.k.a. Small Press Shan, here to help you figure out what the best in indie comics was this week. And uh, this is obviously not Wednesday, <laughs> Phil, um, unless he's gotten a, a crazy new look. But uh, this is uh, Jamie, who is going to be helping us out this week. Super excited to yeah, have you. Yeah, me too. I'm very excited you. to be here. Yeah, Jamie is not only a Bat City a uh, family member and a volunteer who you may have seen um, on the Bat City page as as Gwenum uh, during the Punk Rock Flea Market. But Jamie is also our friendly neighborhood officer, Jamie, who comes in and keeps Bat City safe. <laughs> yes, so. absolutely. I always stop in, make sure you guys are doing well, and just kind of hanging out. Brings Matt coffee. You know. Also true, yes. <laughs> All the important Always things. good coffee. Always yes, it's Matt coffee. <laughs> so, Jamie, since it's your first time here, yeah. tell everybody, like, some of your favorite characters, what kind of stuff do you like to collect, things like yeah. that. Yeah, so, like she said, I was, I dressed up as Gwenham for our punk rock food market, which was, like, super cool. Um, she's one of my favorites. I also enjoy Scarlet Witch and Silk. Um, those are, Silk's my newest one that I've kind of gotten into, and I'm very excited that her comics are going to be coming out. So, I'm excited to look and look forward to that. Um, but yeah, I've actually just recently got into comics, I would say the last, like, maybe two years. But a lot more now since Bat City's got here. It's been opened up a lot more, um, you know, titles and different stuff than just, you know, your typical Marvel and DC kind of, kind of stuff. Yeah. I can't wait. I know. Can I tell them that you're debuting a thing at MegaCon? Are you ready for that announcement? What? Your new your new costume. Oh, yes. I, yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, I forgot. Yeah, so I did get a silk cosplay costume for MegaCon, and we're going to be doing that. So I'm super excited for that. Yeah. And so we'll be, we'll be Gwenham one day, um, silk another day, Scarlet Witch the other day. And then probably have a chill Marvel undercover with the hat and the, you know, the sunglasses and just a regular old t-shirt. Definitely going to pull that one off one day. It's, just chill. it's my last, the last day. I'm tired. I don't want to do anything. So that's yeah. using my go-to outfit for that Sunday. I love it. I'm super excited. Um, if you don't know if you're in the Florida area or if you're traveling, Megacon is kind of the, it's like the East Coast Southern East Coast, I guess, big convention. Mm -hmm. You know, you got New York Comic Con at the top and then uh, uh, Me Megacon t here in Florida. And that is at the end of this month, which uh, there is... It's my a break time, so. It is? It is what? my birthday, yeah. Mm -hmm. I will be there for my birthday. That's dope. Yeah. That's a great way to celebrate your birthday. It is. I'm excited. And you just tell all of the people that it's your birthday and see if people give you free stuff. That's actually they will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Venmo me. It's <laughs> Get a new cosplay outfit. There you go. Yeah. There, trust me, that I've done that. That, <laughs> that is the thing. So uh, we are uh, going to be winding down your weekend with Loka Tour, uh, which is this is their cab sab. They do have a full range of reds. I, uh, Matt and I actually tried their Pinot Noir the other day, so I'm very curious to see mm. what the cab sab tastes like. Um, one of the things, their like whole thing is that it's the state of wine, and then so it's like Loka. Location, mm. like so, it's like broken up, like so. That's it's not loca like crazy. It's like location, but they broke it up to have that in there. So it's like a tour of the state of California, essentially, oh. with their different wines. Um, this one says it's uh, fruit, black fruit flavors, uh, spices, and a firm structure, and it's supposed to be paired with meaty things like peppercorn ribeye and braised short ribs. So yeah. I'm gonna give it a try. That's Jamie good. actually likes wine, so this might yeah. be more fun. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's good. That's really smooth. There's, mm -hmm. like, no kickback on that. Usually, you... And I struggle with uh, red wine sometimes, like the drier ones. Um, I'm more like a sweeter wine kind of person. Yeah. But this is really good because it's not... It doesn't have too much of a bite. It's not, like, too dry. So that's dangerous. Yeah, it's got Very a little good. bit of... It's got a little bit of the butter, but not too much yeah. either. So it's, like, if you don't really like the buttery wines, this one doesn't have too much of that. But if you don't like the spicy, mm -hmm. yes, and and it's, it's still good. It's yeah. not overpowering. It's very good. Yeah, this is solid. Good pick. And these are these are on the the Win Dixie Bogo, so you can buy one and get one free. You gotta love the Win Dixie. They do not sponsor this show, but we you wouldn't know. <laughs> I'm an Aldi fan because Aldi is right next to our house. I don't have to get on the main road to get to Aldi, so it's very <laughs> beneficial. And I enjoy it very much. It just opened, so but I'm gonna have to make some trips to Winn Dixie because I think every wine that you've ever given me has been absolutely delicious. So wherever you get your wines is uh, where we need to start getting ours. Yes, so. 
Usually when Dixie or Total Wine, that's the one thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's one. I think yeah. that's where we had the three. What's yeah. on University? Total, Total Wine. Wine. Okay. Total Wine. <laughs> um, and speaking of people that don't sponsor us, but might as well, uh, <laughs> we are streaming live at Mysterium uh, Escape Rooms right now. Um, I just saw Nick pop in and say, uh, hope, how, ask how everybody's week's been. So if you are in the comments, if you're watching this live on Facebook, you know, pop in there with how your week's been because we love to hear that. Um, and if you are in the Sarasota, Bradenton uh, area, you should pop over to Sarasota and try out Mysterium Escape Rooms. Um, they are so cool. Uh, you can go back a couple weeks on the wind down and you can actually see us coming to you live from inside the lobby um, and kind of mm -hmm. just see some of the setup where they have all their VR and video, like other video game kind of things going on. But if you want to go and check out their escape rooms, they have uh, some really, really cool ones. And I can't wait to like... I think we might need to go for my birthday. I've never been to an escape room ever. There you go. So yes. When we okay. get back, we'll Do you celebrate. like aliens, westerns, or the beach? Oh, all sounds really cool. Okay. I think that... I think western is probably the... That would be kind of cool. Okay, it's like a oh. saloon. It's super cool. Oh yeah, that's yeah. That'd be fun. The I think the the alien one is the biggest one right now. Area nine four one, and it's <laughs> super cool. Like just to go inside of it was like the coolest thing ever. Um, <laughs> oh, Phil said I'm sitting at home eating ice cream and watching Gossip Girl, trying not to cry because I was replaced by somebody cooler this week. <laughs> uh, Absolutely not. <laughs> Well, thanks for watching, Phil, and thanks for watching, Nick. Um, and we are going to talk about some really cool comics this week. Um, and you can make a list at home of all of the comics that you need to check out at your local comic shop, whether that's us or somebody else. So uh, first up, we have We're Monsters Lie, issue two from Dark Horse Comics. Um, this first issue of this, if you didn't catch it, it's probably, like depending on your store, might be a little hard because we sold out of it very quickly. Um, but this is Kyle Starks, who's known for doing Rick and Morty style things and six size kicks and Trigger Keaton and a bunch of alpha betas I think he's doing right now. But this is what if every serial killer from every movie that you've ever seen, like all the horror slasher films, they all went home at the end of the day to their quiet suburban neighborhood where they actually have like an HOA that's like, you can't put your trash cans there. And like the trash cans are filled, like... They're like, are those trash cans filled with body parts? And they're like, no. And they're like, well, they should be. Um, and in the very first issue of this book, we saw uh, the main one of the killers in the neighborhood brought back his his kidnapped people to the neighborhood and murdered them there. And that's against the rules because they don't. They're like, you don't bring it home because you're keeping everybody safe by not bringing your murder victims home. And a young boy gets away at the end of issue or at the beginning of issue one, really. And then uh, in issue two, picks up with the police coming and investigating this neighborhood and just all of these serial killers like having to take care of it. It's hilarious. It's totally, there's nothing serious in this book at all, but it's that good like quick-witted humor that mm. just makes the story flow and makes you like crack up laughing the whole time. So if you're looking for a horror humor book, uh, Where Monsters Lie is definitely the one. That sounds very interesting. Uh, from Scout Comics, we have Road Trip to Hell, issue three. Um, this is the story of a young boy who's dad is he finds out in issue one is satan and he has died and he is no longer uh ruling hell because he died and so the son is come he has baphomet comes to him and is like hey just so you know you're now the heir to the throne of hell and you need to you know uh take over he's like you're somehow related to satan uh yeah you know there's like all these loopholes and stuff but anyway like heaven has decided that you're gonna take over and you just have to deal with it and then he goes oh and also by the way if you don't do it in three days um you don't gain the throne and anybody else can take over if they kill you along the way so he is on this mission to get to hell to take over so that people can't kill him and everybody's coming after him, and his bodyguard uh, is Joan of Arc. And so you get this mission, and in this uh, particular issue, they are fighting against um, the the dead Hitler and his wife Ava. Um, they are fighting the two of them and trying to figure out how they can get away from the cops and the bad guys and everybody, because, again, they only have three days to get to hell before, uh, you know, it breaks loose. So uh, check it out, Road Trip to Hell from Scout. Again, another great comedy that's kind of set in that horror 
ish realm, but not. There's really nothing scary about this one unless you're afraid of like Baphomet randomly popping up in places. <laughs> uh, Red Winter Fallout issue three from Scout Comics. This is your typical spy movie. If you are a fan of John Clancy books or uh, The Born Identity or any of those kinds of spy movies or stories, this is going to be the perfect one for you. Um, it stars a, a guy who is, kill, is in a shootout with a bunch of different people from the different Russian gangs and two different American operatives are sent in. One who's been there for a long time kind of shows up to help him get through and the other one is somebody who they send right now to like clean up the mess for everybody. And I mean it's just everything that you would expect from a spy story kind of falls into place from there where you've got oh like you're solving the case but you're doing a bad job at some points and you know the every issue unfolds a little bit more of who these people were in the past and who they're going to be going forward and how they're all connected. And so we're kind of just now getting to the point where we're learning why the operative who came for him against orders came for him. And you get to see, it's kind of cool because they do, and I think you're on the page, they do a sepia t a tone for her memory. And then while she's in her memory, somebody in that tells her a story. And so you get black and white for their memory within her memory. And oh, wow. then it goes back to full color. And so it was an interesting way to show us like mm -hmm. the different time periods all at one time. Oh yeah. But super cool. Again, it's very action paced, but you it you're gonna get that story built into it at the same time. So if you're if you're a born fan, um, or any any of those kinds of things, you definitely want to pick this one up. And it's scouts, so it'll probably be five issues. Um, next up, okay, this one, this one is hard. This one might have some parts that you need to check, like, because they do some lab work <laughs> on people. So uh, this is okay. uh, the Purple of Oblivion issue uh, four, and it's from uh, a Sumerian comics, and it's crazy. So just <laughs> know that when you open it up, you're probably going to be like, whoa, what just happened? Um, but this is the story of of a cult type group of people who are trying to um, bring about a new style of humanity and then they call it the new skin and they're doing it through this purple goo and they're using it like they need to find a person that they can inject with this goo who can raise like the symbiote creature that will bring mm -hmm. forth their skin um, and their new being. And so they keep they keep sending out this hot girl to bars to like collect dudes to like use as the experiment. And they finally, over the course of the series, have kind of found a, can a couple of candidates that could work. And oh, you can show that. That's this fine. one, okay? Yeah, that's fine. The other uh, one was definitely not no. appropriate. <laughs> I was about to split it. I was like, actually, that's, uh, that's not allowed. That's not allowed. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so in this issue, they kind of they kind of get to some of their experimenting, and we get to see how it works out. Um, there may not be much more to go with this story because the ending of it gets really, really crazy. So I'm not sure how we can come back from it. But uh, if you're in, if you were a fan of Heavy Metal Drummer, this is that team. This is that craziness. So just know that it's kind of like a huge, like crazy trip from page one to the end. Sounds like that. Yeah. And also from uh, that team, we have The Firstborns, issue three from Sumerian. And this is the alien version of all of that. This is um, kind of like if E.T. went wrong, um, really wrong. I guess E.T. kind of does go wrong most of the movie. But um, this is... On another level. Yeah, on a different level. This uh, starts with a young boy who has a nightmare. And in his nightmarish state, he uh, gets a dream of another kid burning up in the forest and he's like and then he wakes up the next day and that kid's literally missing and they have a whole assembly at school and he's like takes his friends aside and is like dudes I think I know what happened to him I think there's like aliens in the woods and so they go out like all oh, stand by me stranger thingsy and <laughs> check out like these woods together and you get some weird creepy stuff yeah yes. and it's it's such a strange it's a strange book. It's like one of the fastest reads because this this creative team uses their art. Like they're definitely more on that cartoonist side and they use the art to tell the story a lot. Um, but it's such a cool, crazy story that you like don't even notice that you're not really reading. You're like so engrossed in the art yeah. all the time. So if you like Stranger Things and you were like, I need a really, really weird version of this. This is this is your book. 
I'm gonna take a drink of this wine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very good. Rob just like, I'll take a sip. Right, there's a whole bottle. Get 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 going. It's fine. <laughs> and yeah, and it's um uh, I'll put it back over here really fast. It's Loca Tour. It's Cab Sam. And mm. if you're in a state with uh Win Dixie, at least in our area, it's buy one, get one free. Can't I'll beat that. You really can't. And their Pinot Noir is really good too. I haven't had um any of their other fleet like other other styles, but the Pinot and the Cab Sab so far seem pretty yeah. good. Yeah, and I think that's what we had a conversation on before, is, like, wines that have been a little bit on the cheaper side, or, yeah. you know, some of the ones that we've gotten in other places have, they have a lot of sugars in them, and they're mm -hmm. a lot of sweeter, and then it just doesn't make you feel good. Yeah. And you don't necessarily want that, so, you you know, it's it's a good quality wine for, you know, a decent price, which is always Yeah, nice. I think they were, like, twelve ninety nine, and then you get one for free. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. That's, that's, that's great. That's great. Um, from, what's up? I was like, where are we at? Um, okay, so this technically came out, like, two weeks ago, but ours, they, like, were missing from our shipment, so they just sent it to me. So it's new this week if you shop at Bad City. But Door to Door, Night by Night, issue three from Nightfall, which is the horror imprint of Vault Comics. Um, and one of my favorite imprints. I love it so much. But this story starts out as a group of people going door to door and knocking on doors like, oh, we're trying to sell um, a photo. And if you buy this photo package, the money goes to the volunteer fire department of this town that they've like made up. So they're totally scamming people uh, to get money. And they end up picking up this lady off the side of the road and they're like, hey, everybody's <laughs> welcome with us. And they take her in and they get to this small town and they're knocking on doors. And it turns out she's like a monster hunter. And this town is overrun by these, like, chupacabra-looking goblins. And everybody is, starts to turn into them. They get possessed by them. And so in this issue, the the door by the door to door team has tried to figure out what is going on. And so they've taken matters into their own hands, and they're kind of investigating the situation. And the book goes from horror to more sci-fi. Like, this is your crossing point. Uh, and, and so it's, it's great to see the story really, really change, but also like you finally get to see these characters act out and do something together, um, instead of each person being on their own thing. And then I love it because they're still doing their job though. Yeah. So they're still like, okay, well this is weird, but like, I haven't knocked on this door yet. So let me see if they want to purchase our opportunity. And it's like, I love it. Cause I would imagine there's so many people who would do that be like the world's weird and strange, and I don't really know what's going on, so I'm just gonna go to work today. Yeah, and, like a normal day. Yeah, and see how it plays out. <laughs> so, um, this is this is one of the the like 17 colon bun books on the on the shelf right now, uh, but it does still have all of that like vault nightfall appeal of of is this gonna be like where is this gonna go and how is it gonna get there and where you're like I really just kind of want to see where 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 this story plays out too. Yeah. So check it, it out. Very interesting. But anything that usually involves law enforcement or anything like that, you know, I'm always like, I'm into it. Detectives, I'm into it. <laughs> You're like, what's going Better to read it than watch it on TV sometimes, so. And I would be curious, you know, if you were like, if you could just start like writing it all, like writing all these different things that happen down, and then someday you're going to be like prepared for that when yeah. it happens to you. You're I'm gonna be like, this is so real, or yes. this is not how it goes. I have been prepared for this <laughs> moment forever. Like this, you know, oh, some aliens. I've read it in a lot of comics, guys. Okay, I know the what's detective going on. that does this always <laughs> dies first, so I'm not going to do that. And like, you're prepared. You're, you always. got it. Yes. Um, up next, we have Darkland, issue three from Scout Comics. This has been one of the Scout books that actually seems to be coming out really, really fast. Um, but I think it's just every three weeks and it just feels faster. Um, but this is the story of a it's kind of following two different people. One of them is a young girl who we don't know much about her past. She's mm -hmm. just kind of living on her own in a post-apocalyptic world. And a boy falls through the skylight of this abandoned mall that she's staying in. And she ends up saving him from the monsters, much to, like, her own rule-breaking disagreement. And, of course, he's totally a double-crosser and we don't like him. And I totally feel like Han's, like, from Frozen going on <laughs> here. Like, I, like, immediately it was like, I don't like you, you feel like Han's. Yeah. Um, and we all know how we all And we like all him. know how we feel about Han's. Oh, my gosh. Everybody, even Matt yelled at the TV when he found <laughs> out Han's was a terrible person. Um, you want him to be the good you guy. You want him to be the good guy. He did such a good, they did a great job with that character. 
But the other side of the story is there is a woman who um, is a part of a group that was kind of a freedom fighters group for a long time. And as the apocalypse got worse and worse, they break apart. And now she kind of works as a mercenary. And she's been put on this mission to find this little girl and bring her back for them to do something with. We don't really know. And so the only people out there trying to protect this little girl are the old freedom fighters. And so they're going to have to fight their own friend to save the girl who may or may not have a connection with them in a way that we are still kind of piecing together. Um, it's super great if you like those post-apocalyptic stories. Honestly, this is one of the ones that is really giving you like those Mad Max kind of vibes like as it's going on. And because each team is led, like the bad guys were led by a woman, the mercenary is a woman, we've got the little girl who's surviving on her own and maybe like this special chosen one kind of thing. And then the other like freedom fighters are led by women. So it's like all these powerful women kind of leading mm -hmm. the charge of this apocalyptic world. And I'm like, I mean, they're getting stuff done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously. Yeah. So Dark Land, check it out. Uh, Category Zero Conflict, issue three from Scout Comics. This is um, this is your superheroes in, in jail kind of story. This is one of those, we've rounded up anybody with powers and we're, we're going to do something with them. And the whole time for issue one, we kind of learned a little bit about this one character, Megan, and her dad, who was the one who kind of did all the research on it. And then it jumps into all of the people, like the future, and all the people with powers are being locked up. And it seems like Megan's dad is kind of the problem, not the solution that mm. we thought he was going to be. And as the story's gone on, we have gotten to see this whole concept around the idea of if these people do get out and if they do break out, where do they go? What's going to happen? Who's the bad guy? And who's the good guy? I, it's so it's one of those where everybody's kind of playing everybody. So you're watching something and you like are reading it and you like, I hate this guy. I hate this guy. I hate this guy. And then it's like, oh, maybe I don't hate this guy. And it's one of those where you just don't know who to trust, like, any page. And then the next page, you're like, okay, everything I thought I knew is gone. Uh, but they've rounded up people who just test, like, if your blood comes back positive for this. So in this issue, we're starting to see that a lot of people who've never actually had powers are being locked up. Kind of like in Winter Soldier where yeah. Cap's like, oh, you're going to put a lot of people, you're going to kill a lot of people who didn't actually do anything mm -hmm. wrong. We're seeing that in this story is actually who was locked up. And so now they're trying to figure out, like, do any of these people actually have powers? And is the government just, like, way overstepping? So it's going to go in a lot of different directions and probably in, like, two issues because Scout usually wraps up in, like, four or five. And so I imagine it's going to be done in five. And I'm really curious to see where this twist takes us for issue four. Um, we've got some Hellboy related books. Someday I'm, I have, so I've never read Hellboy. Yeah. Like I've seen the movie, um, the, the old movies. I haven't seen the new one with David Harbour, but I've seen the, um, old ones. And I always read all of the, like, end of, like the, the little mini series that come out around Hellboy and I'm mm -hmm. super into them. So someday I'm going to go back and read all of Hellboy because <laughs> I feel like I know the entire universe now, except for the Hellboy himself. Um, but we've got Koshi in Hell, issue three from, from Dark Horse and the Hellboy universe. And this is a story of Koshi, who's a character in the Hellboy world, and he used to be the undead, and that was his whole thing, is like, he, he's, he's like Koshi the Deathless, Koshi the Undead. And he's been in Hell all this time, but he never actually died, because he can't. And so now he is battling different creatures in hell that are all demons that we've seen in the hellboy world and so people who as far as like from the hellboy world do you think have been like turned to stone or just put sentenced to a lifetime in hell or whatever happened to that character they're all kind of showing up here and in this particular issue koshi comes across a a demon who's been trapped in a, a vial and he's like oh if you let me out um, I'll, I'll help you fight these people, but I need a little bit of blood. And Koshi's like, well, I don't trust demons, so um, I'll make you a deal. I'll let you out, but it has to be one drop, and you have to swear to just one drop. But I still don't trust you, demon. And then Koshi and the demon go along their way, and, um, you know, we'll see how the demon lives up to his word as we get to the end. 
Um, and there's only one more issue to go, which is what I like about all these Hellboy tie-in books is that they're usually either two to four issues. None of it's ever long. So you can kind of get these bits and pieces without having to invest forever mm -hmm. into a story in case you don't like it. Um, and they're always just really cool, weird stories. Um, which, speaking of, Castle Full of Blackbirds, issue four from uh, Dark Horse as well. And I don't think this one's ending here. I think uh, after I just said the two to four issues, I think <laughs> that this one is actually going to keep going. But this is the story of a young girl who is a witch. And it's her going to her witch academy for training. Um, and they kind of take in anybody that shows signs of these powers. And the whole time she's here, we see different teachers manipulating her in different ways and there's the one teacher who might be trying to help her the whole time and then there's the one teacher who you're like this person is obviously manipulating her they're trying to sh like push her down the dark path this is where this is going and and in issue four we kind of see the twists and turns of all of that kind of play into the story a lot more and like true motivations behind all of the characters start to surface and uh just all the crazy things that could happen in a story kind of come in in issue four. But usually we see all the big turns in issue three, so that's why I said I bet this one's going to keep going because mm -hmm. there was a lot of turns that either lead back into the Hellboy universe um, or are going to bring us more issues from this for sure. But Castle Full of Blackbirds, I really just want more witch stories that go that deep like, yeah. with it. Um, from Keen Spot, we have issue two of Ch Chopping Block. And this is, this is what if a Jason-like character was raised by uh, Norma from Psycho. So, like, Norma Bates is raising Jason, um, and he's kind of just, like, the lovable oaf who's always doing everything wrong. And Norma is manipulating the situation the whole time. And it's Keen Spot, so it's 100% parody for sure, but there's just, it's crazy illustration in this one. Um, I like that there's not really any panels in this book. It, there's just kind of blocks yeah. behind the text. But Norma in this, um, a, an eyeball has come to the world, and it is the herald of a very big bad guy who's supposed to come to destroy it. And Norma has essentially been the one who, like the mother, and I guess she doesn't really go by Norma. She just goes by mother because um, we're not trying to obviously get sued so she uh she them not me they uh so mother is like oh i meant for that to come to me but somehow you landed on this giant oaf and so now this this jason like character is running around with this herald attached to him and all of the the problems and powers that come with it and he's like i found a friend and it's just it's it's so cute. Very cute um it's great it's it's this is one of those keen spot books that reads like it could be for all ages, but at the same time, a younger kid probably won't get any of the references. So it's one of those, like, it kind of borders on who is this really written for. But um, if you are, in, like, it's a Shrek. Like, kids like it, but they probably don't get 70% of the jokes. Sure. This is this is one of those. All right. Uh, up next, we've got Radiant Black issue 22 from Image. I never bring books that are this far into the story, uh, into the into the part where we talk about, but we are in the fourth arc of Radiant Black, and I just wanted to remind people that if you haven't jumped in yet, you can get like trades and stuff for $9.99, and um, the massive verse is becoming just that. It's becoming a massive verse, and so um, if you don't know Radiant Black, that's kind of... You, we say it every week, you don't have to read Radiant Black to be a part of the Massive Verse, but for people who have gotten into some of the characters like Rogue Sun and Radiant Pink and Inferno Girl Red, this is where it all kind of spurred out of is two boys, two 30-something-year-old men who kind of feel like neither of them accomplish anything are uh, at home in Chicago visiting and one of them gets a black hole like sucked into a black hole and a black hole sucked into him essentially and becomes a superhero and the friend is kind of helping him and a lot of things happen in the first two issues that feel like they're never going to come into play ever again and they're all starting to show up and come into play and lead towards a really big um, event coming our way very very soon according to Kyle Higgins the writer so if you are a fan of superheroes but you're 
kind of like I'm tired of the big two, but I mm. want to keep superheroing. This is one of those books that's perfect for that because it is more about the human interest than the superhero stuff. Like this entire issue follows a character who's gone to LA to try to sell his short story and uh, is dealing with the, oh, this is the roommate who I don't want to speak to ever again, but now I'm like reliant on them. And this is like the ex-girlfriend that I like, feel like left me behind and so it's all just that like if you've been in the creative world and you've wanted to ever like have your story shared or if you've wanted to ever make those connections and all of the connections Mm -hmm. seem to like throw you under the bus at all turns like this is that story and yet at the same time they're superheroes yeah and so it's not just about them as superheroes yeah brings in that human aspect yeah Kyle Higgins, who wrote it, even said, if you want a book that's just about superheroes, there are hundreds and thousands of them from Marvel and DC, but if you want a story that's about humans who just happen to have superhero powers, read The Massive first, because that's what they're focusing on. Mm-hmm. Um, up next, Breath of Shadows, issue two from IDW. This is one of those books, we always make the joke on the show, where there's always that one book where we're like, is really teetered on whether or not it was a pick of the week or not um this one and the next one are both kind of in that category um and breath of shadows specifically for the crazy storytelling that's going on in here um this is a story about a guy who's a musician who has a severe drug addiction and his band is like if you don't get help we're gonna break up but they also are like but we can't break up because you're kind of the talent and the reason people come so please get help And so his producer, his manager, was like, oh, remember that story in that book that we read that time? It's actually true. There's this hidden place where you can go to in a jungle in, like, South America. And if you get this mysterious plant, it's supposed to give you, like, the greatest high and you never get high ever again. And so they hire a team of people who have, like, lived there locally, but also, like, people who have wanted to study that area forever, like who have been studying it forever, but have never been there. And they go out uh, on this trip. Well, his, all of his band members show up because they're like, well, you're we're you have to come mm-hmm. back and we want to make sure. So of course they, they come back and it's totally, they're not in it for his best interest at all. But so he is, they're on this mission. He's trying to find stuff. And the coolest, craziest thing about this book is that when he starts to get the itch to do more drugs he literally starts seeing bugs like crawling all over people and like these giant centipedes and millipedes will just start crawling on everything i think the next page might show it um yeah yeah it's crazy like these the bugs and stuff and so this whole book you can't tell if it's just him seeing it or if you are seeing it too and so it starts to come a part of a thing where you start to feel like you're crazy because nobody's acknowledging it while you're reading it. But, like, you see it happening in the artwork and you're like, is this happening or is this not happening? Am I tripping mm-hmm. out? Is he tripping out? Like, who's yeah, tripping out? Wrong. Because you know that there's, like, a horror element. You know something bad. Like, any of these movies where they go to, like, these ancient runs that they're not supposed to be at. It's something is going to happen. always bad. And I'm like, these bugs have to mean more than just his addiction. And I'm waiting to see how these bugs come into play. And IDW Originals Imprint is crushing it. Everything that they're putting out on the Originals line since IDW has kind of pushed away from just licensed properties has been all-star. And that's why I'm like, this probably could have just gone in the picks of the week this week because it was so good. But I'm waiting for that turn in issue three so I know what happens before I, like, <laughs> commit to being obsessed with it. But if you like horror and you like music, this is definitely one that is that central point, like, of all of those things. So, um, since I just said this one, I guess I'll go with this next. This is Bone Check. Oh, are we at end? Okay, we're at books that are ending now. Um, this is last issue. So this is Bone Check, issue three from Legends Publishing. Um, and Cameron Johnson is the cartoonist on this who does everything, like writing, uh, writing and art and everything, which I know that's generally speaking uh, what I mean by cartoonist. But if you didn't know, um, then uh, this book is crazy. This is a book that mixes prose and traditional comic telling and all kinds of strange art all together. Like, that's such a perfect page to pull that up on. But this is the story of a guy who is a, a bounty hunter. He kind of works in, like, a Deadpool mercenary kind of thing. Like, he literally goes in and looks at the board for things that he can find in the first issue. 
Um, and it's kind of in that same vein of ridiculousness. Like, he's got bombs that have weird names and, like, all of his guns have funny names and stuff like that. And he's just constantly like, oh, we're going to use this one. And then, like, he'll do something. Like, he'll be like, I'm going to go in this room and have a shootout. And it turns into, like, a carnival scene. And it's, like, him just, like, shooting, like, the little ducks and stuff that you have in a carnival oh game. Gosh. But it's all the people. Like, then it rolls back, and it's just the people all around him. And so it's such a, a crazy book that just kind of highlights uh, all kinds of different media forms. Because, like, they put the newspapers yeah. in there. They put the ads mm-hmm. in there. Um, so it's kind of a cool, like, mixed media book. But the art in it is just fantastic. And I was I was talking to the guy, uh, Sean, who's in charge of Legends Publishing, who owns Comics Elite, a comic shop. And I was like, dude, this book, he was like, oh, every time Cameron came with me with a book, I was like, let's let's keep going, let's keep going, let's get weirder. And he was like, and then he got this one, and I was like, all right, let's do it. And I was like, I'm so glad you did. It's so strange, and I love it so much. <laughs> so uh, if you didn't check out Bone Check, it's only three issues. I can't guarantee you there's going to be a trade. This is Legends Publishing. This is like their first book that's under Legends Publishing, other than uh, Gloppel, which was uh, is coming back. This has just come back uh, through Legends Publishing. So I don't know if you're gonna get trades. So hunt down issues one through three um, at your LCS, whether that's me uh, somewhere else or Comics Elite. You can probably just hit them up and find it through them. So worth it. Yes, absolutely worth it. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to give you some more wine. Mm. Oh, yeah, we both finished at the same time, I think. Woohoo! And once again, we are drinking Loca Tour, which is off the screen while I pour my glass, I'm sure. Um, but this is a Cab Sab. Mm, it's so um, good. And it's full bodied, bold, black fruits and firm structure, which is a word I've never, like a phrase I've never used to hurt, hurt to describe wine, yeah. but. Uh, it has a firm structure. A it's firm not structure. really what I would think of when I'm talking about wine. So <laughs> No, not at all. I'm like, well, I don't usually describe liquids as firm and structured. But there, it, yes, because you know, they're I, definitely neither of those. Neither of those things. But it makes sense. You know, like, it's good. So Right. We're not mad at you, Locator, for describing it that way because the wine's delicious. Yes, so. absolutely. For <laughs> Bogo, it's uh, Yes. Great. Uh from, where are we? Phantasmagoria. I was like, I'm reading this. I'm staring at it. Um, and it is issue five, potentially the end of this from a Scout Comics and the Black Caravan imprint. Um, this is your classic Victorian, like, horror story. Um, it starts out with a woman who gets possessed by the, a demon, and she's killing all these people. And this guy comes in, and he's like, oh, I'm like your... You know, your Sherlock Holmes or your, like, from hell situation. I can, like, exercise this demon and solve this mystery. And uh, he exercises the demon, and it just goes out into the world and, Mm. like, ends up in somebody else. And then everything breaks loose from there. A little girl gets possessed. The woman is still possessed. Other people get possessed. The demons, like, start to take over the world. It is crazy. And you're still in this, like, murder mystery kind of thing. So you see, like, the ultimate, like, good and bad that he's been working against and, like, with. And it's such a crazy story, but it's such a good classic Victorian horror story and that black and my art lends perfectly to the book that it's that it's creating mm-hmm. in there um, this is the end so I don't want to give you too much of it but Phantasmagoria has been wonderful um, I'm so glad Scout picked it up it was originally the first couple issues were released originally by the creative team like themselves without a publisher and I'm glad that they went back and got some like more work on the art and more work on the story and then they brought it into Scout and it's been so good if you didn't grab it grab it now uh speaking of books ending from Scout uh Forever Forward issue 5 Scout Comics this is the one of the time travel books on the shelf that is um coming to an end I feel like with time travel you could like never say it's coming to an end yes yeah. then it just starts over again yeah, and that's kind of the point of this book. Uh, it is all about a guy who is very Frankensteinian in the way he works. Like, he locks himself in his lab. He's mm-hmm. got, like, this perfect, like, girlfriend, and she's, like, sitting there, like, I want to go out with you. I want to do all these things. And he's like, I must work on my research. 
And he ends up inventing time travel, but only in one direction. So there's no way to come back. And he hasn't gotten to like the backwards yet. He's only gotten to the forwards. And his girlfriend and all of his friends show up for his birthday and they get in this giant argument and his time machine ends up going off and they all get sucked into the future and the future is apocalyptic. It's terrible. It's right in the middle of like this massive war and all this stuff going on. And they see a note on the wall that he says is in his handwriting that says the only way back is forward. And so he's like, I obviously made it out by going forward. So everybody, we have to jump forward. And so for four issues we watch him jump forward and we see how the world works and we see how his friends make their decisions on how they want to live their lives and where they want to live their lives and how that changes the future mm -hmm. um and then this one you know brings us to that how will you get out of it or you know how will you not get out of it and this is one of those books where when i got to the end i was like i'm not crying you're crying yeah like i was like what a great ending yeah. uh you wrapped it up so beautifully and it's the, great when it comes to like a good conclusion at the end it was good and the wrapping it like showing how he like learns and grows and does different things throughout the story all four five issues has been great so if you like time travel yeah this is a good one huh. i'm sure he would like and uh, year Zero, Volume Zero, Issue Five, the end of the prequel to Year Zero from AWA. Um, this is, Year Zero itself has been on, have we, three volumes, I think, we've done with Year Zero. And uh, Benjamin Percy, who's known for all of his Marvel work on, you know, everything for a while there, um, but specifically the Wolverine series, he was writing Year Zero, and it's the story of the zombie apocalypse, and it's always told from four different people's point of view in each volume, um, and just regular people and how they experience it. And he went to Daniel Krauss and said, hey, Daniel Krauss, you're the zombie expert. You wrote for George Romero. You took over for him. I want you to tell a prequel about how the zombie information gets out to the public. And Daniel took that on literally the like day that lockdown started from COVID. Wow. And so he said he spent two weeks in his office, not able to talk to anybody, and looking at all the weird news coming from everywhere and how none of it. This is happening now. <laughs> and he was like, what if this was zombies? This is, like, the news is coming out so disjointed. We have no idea what's going on. Nobody's informed. What if this yeah. was zombies? We what would, if it was it? That was it. We'd be dead. <laughs> we would all have died. And so he decided that's how he was going to, he was going to take that information and put it into the story. And so we have the story of um, a woman who's a flight attendant. And so she's hearing all the stories from the different cops and everybody. We have the story of um, a woman who is uh, living in the, she's a nurse in a hospital uh, dealing with all the people who are coming in with issues we have a guy who is in north korea and he's wondering what what's going on across the border um and then we have uh my gosh who's the fourth one another uh, another person um but there's so many different stories and how they come together and i'm not gonna lie i didn't read this issue before it because i didn't want to actually spoil uh how we got to the end of this because i was worried that i would because i know it's going to be killer um and i know the beginning of year zero so I didn't want to, like, confuse what happened in this last issue and what happened in the beginning of Year Zero and then, like, mess up yeah. what, was, what was already known and what wasn't. So I have to read it immediately after this because I need to know what happened to everybody. But seriously, this is the master of zombies writing a story about how a zombie apocalypse would start. Um, it's five issues. It's going to be in a nine ninety nine trade. So if you missed all the single issues and now you can't find them, it's AWA gonna be a 9.99 trade i talked to axel alonso about that last week and was like hey but you've had a couple that have come in he said those that are a little bit more and he said those are only the ones that bring in like eight issues whenever we do our four and five part series we're still gonna keep it at 9.99 because we want you to read the books so get your ten dollar trade when it comes out of awa's year zero volume zero because you're gonna want it in your collection Um, last ending book is issue uh, four of Thud from Scout Comics. And I'm going to tell you this right now. When you hold the cover up, this cover got put on backwards and upside down. So this is actually the front of the book. Um, oh, okay. So 
So Oh yeah it is. It yeah. totally is upside down. <laughs> so when you So after, this is great. This is perfect. This is the way it's supposed to be. So. Yeah. That's the that's the outside. Be patient with me when I'm trying to figure out uh, <laughs> how to show you these pages. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna warn her because I opened it up and I was like, This seems like the end of the story and then I was like, Oh crap it is. Um but the double vision has been called such because each issue is actually two issues. Um, we originally saw uh, issue one come out about a year ago, and then we never saw like the rest of it come out, and they decided to just do these double issues for the whole series. Um, and so issue one and two has, has been inside of one. It's such a great book. This is the story of a guy who kind of just always wanted to be a superhero and he wants that opportunity and so he drew a superhero his whole life named Thud and now Thud has come to somehow exist in the real world and he can't be there at the same time as like this man being awake and so he just keeps trying to meet him because he's like oh my god this is my superhero I don't know how he's here and every time he just ends up kind of being the damsel in distress for Thud to come to (laughs) And in this uh, last two issues, we kind of just see um, them get to that point where it's like, how is this happening? What's happening? And Thud having to face down against the villains who are called the BDSM, the bad dudes in ski masks. And so they are having to to do this battle. Um, and it's absurd. It's Might crazy. Be. But the, Oh, yes, you do. Yeah. Right there. yeah. <laughs> we just picked a good spot. It's and only in the thud when thud is around is there color in the book. They're, like it's spot colored oh. with thud and the bad guys. Um, everything else is black and white except for like maybe some blood here and there. Um, so it's a really cool use of color. It's all done uh, by one cartoonist, um, Brian Odemar, who does the whole story. It's so fantastic. So grab it. Each issue is com- is prestige format and then oversized as well, so you're getting a really cool IMAX experience for every every book that you read. Alright, what do we got next? Ooh, number ones! Okay, so we're going to start with Hollowed number one from Keen Spot, and this is one that Jamie has to take home and read yes. it because it's about detectives, and I'm so excited to know what you think. Um, but Keen Spot... I just said earlier they're known for their parody books, but they're starting to try to branch out into more actual storytelling. Um, we saw that with uh, Scorched, I believe, Scorch, what it was called, um, and now um, we're seeing it. Let me see. Let me see. Let me steal this. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Scorn. Scorn. Okay, I knew it was the back page. Uh, from Scorn, and then uh, now Hollowed kind of seems like another one of their stories that they're trying to to jump into actual story telling that's not parody based. Um, but this is the story of, of a detective who shows up on a mission. I know there's so much that's like, I was like confusing. And <laughs> is there like, you're like, he's in the shower. Is it okay? <laughs> okay. Is he covered? <laughs> he's covered. Don't worry. It's good. We can put him on there. Um, but this is, this is the story of a detective and he's kind of got that classic, um, you know, oh, I've been on the beat for a minute yeah. and now there's the new guy. <laughs> And it's so funny because I I love it because the new guy keeps trying to call him by, like, his first name. And he's like, I didn't tell you you could call me by my first name. And then, like, the the other detective walks in and just, like, hey, what's up? And calls him by his first name. He's like, what's up, dude? And I was like, it's just that, like, power struggle. (laughs) You have to be here for a little while to uh, call me by my first name. Call me by my first name. People at work don't – we don't normally call each other by first name, so – yeah. And a lot of us have last names that sound like first names, so when I introduce them to, like, people that I don't work with, I'm like, this is so-and-so, and then I'm like, oh, wait, it's not their real name. <laughs> You're like, that's my And then I'm like, oh, my gosh, what is their real name? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, like, I don't know what you go by. <laughs> are you like that scene in, in uh, Infinity War where he's like, oh, are we using our, our superhero names? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, are we using our last names? You're like, what? Like, very recently, I was, you know, one of our friends has, like, a really long first name but I don't know like if he shortens it or not until I like it had like came up on my caller ID and I was like oh he does shorten it okay no I know I know what to call him (laughs) Um, well that is pretty much the first half of this book and then uh the second half is kind of them starting to piece together what's going on and there is he talks about this is the third murder in the series and so he's like okay at this point Mm -hmm. we officially have a serial killer and he's trying to train this new guy so he's like what do you think is the connection point he's like well they're all dead and he was like don't 
that that's not going to work. Like, put some more thought into it. And so they kind of just start to investigate. And it seems like it's everybody's moment of, like, extreme happiness. And he's like, they're, it's, they wait till they get to this moment of extreme happiness, and then they're murdered. So we need to figure out how we can solve this case. And it kind of just leaves us at the very beginning of that um, story. And so it kind of almost feels like we might get a seven-style murder mystery where there's a little bit tied to... Um, some kind of meaning behind it of maybe not like the seven deadly sins necessarily, but just different kinds of emotions and elation. Yeah. Um, and so it's going to be an interesting story. Plus with the dynamic of like the two detectives who have been there for a while and the new guy mm -hmm. who, how they play that out with the, yeah, people who know each other versus don't really know each other. Cause you know, that one person wants to be accepted into what, yeah, he wants to have that same bond and relationship with yeah. everybody else, which doesn't come so naturally easily. So it'll be interesting to see how they play that up. Yeah. And I'm glad that we're not following the new guy because I feel like too much they follow the new guy as they're, like, trying to, like, break into it. So I like that we're following the guy who's, like, not – and he's not old and rugged. Yeah, he's, he's, like, just the guy who's there. He's, like, I, no, I work to get he's here. There. I'm just doing this job. Like, it's not a – it's not the old guy trying to the new guy. This is just like, hey, I I was where you were like two years ago. Like, mm -hmm. do the work, dude. Yeah, absolutely. Um, next up, we have Phantom Road number one from Image Comics. Um, this is the new Jeff Lemire book, and I always say whenever there's a trend, Jeff Lemire always tries to do a weird spin on it. And so we were talking about this. This may or may not be a weird spin on zombies. It may be something yeah. completely different. I originally thought, you know, they were like some type of aliens just because of the way that they look and kind of all that. And, and then she's like, well, maybe they're zombies. I'm like, they could be like zombie aliens, you know? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I was a little confused to, you know, what we were, what they were dealing with because there was just like, you know, this little piece of like shining sparking stuff and they're like we can't leave that behind I'm like, well why is that important is you're getting chased by some zombie <laughs> alien thing um you know my first instinct would be to get away you know but this is um it's the story of a guy who's a truck driver a semi-truck driver and he is on he's on a long road haul just to get away from his family and that's clear you yeah very clear he does not want to be there but he ends up driving Towards this woman who he thinks is in danger, and then suddenly they both wake up in a parallel dimension, a zombie apocalypse. We're not really sure. Yeah. Um, and that's what's the Jeff Lemire of it all is like, oh, are we in another universe? Are we just kind of exploring, like, the apocalypse world? It's like everything on the shelf, like, blended together mm -hmm. to bring us this book. Um, and these two people who are kind of just thrust into this situation who definitely don't agree with how to handle anything, like you just said. like Yeah, one wants to leave, one wants to go back, and, you know, they're kind of fighting with each other on, like, what what is their next step and what's going on. I think they're just as confused Oh yeah, as anybody else as to what's going on because it just they came out of nowhere. Yeah, you just, like, wake up and you're in this other world and it's like, I have no idea what's going on and yet we just we just got to mm -hmm. roll with it because yeah. there's these zombie alien type people coming for us. So, um, honestly, this is definitely something I would say you're when you read it, know that you're not going to know what's going on. But if you've read Jeff Lemire before, you're probably used to that experience because he does kind of set up issue ones where it's, like, right in the middle of the story, and then he, like, backs up and yeah. is like, oh, by the way, this is what's happening. Because that's why I felt, like, a little bit with, you know, like, the family situation, because it was only, like, you know, two pages of, of him being in this family, and it, it felt like they kind of, like, cut in in the middle of, like, an argument or whatever, so you're like, oh, how did we get, how did we get there? Because it was just, like, one point he's on the road, and the next point he's back with his family, and then he's back in the road, and you're like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? Like, this guy's got a thing. He's yeah. got something going on. He's got a lot going on. I know. I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up being, like, one of those where it's, like, you've ended up in the world of your own creation. Yeah. And, like, you Maybe he's, like, to having flashbacks of yeah. his family, and then that distracts him from what's going on, and, you know, they end up in different... There's so many directions this can go. Um, if you've read it, drop in the comments what you think it could be, because I'm curious about everybody's fan theories, because this is definitely one of those books where I think we're going to go, like, two or three issues in, and we're still going to be like, I'm mm -hmm. not really sure what's happening. Yeah. 
Uh, up next is Banshee number one from Scout Comics. Uh, I'm going to open my book Yeah, now. get your book ready to go. I got my I notes. I know. I'm like throwing you in the deep end. I know. I was like, I got to take notes because I uh, have insomnia, so I didn't sleep last night or this morning. And then I was like, I'm going to read comics because that's the perfect time to do this. <laughs> <laughs> so I took notes. I so I didn't forget. I but you like, know what? I was like, maybe the sleeping will like relax me and chill me out. It did not. Um, it did not put me to sleep like I was kind of hoping it would, which I was good, grateful for because I had to go do this. But I did take notes. Yeah, so I was like, like, maybe reading will put you to sleep. And she was like, text me afterwards and was like, I didn't go to sleep. <laughs> and I was like, okay. I've been up since 8 p.m. yesterday. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're making it through. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Banshees, this is uh, a teenage girl who goes to college mm -hmm. and uh, meets her roommate, and um, things are not what she thought they were going to be at all. No. No. What did you write down? I'm curious. Yeah, no. So I wrote down, um, so I actually went to school. So they are psychology students. Um, her, She finds out her and her roommate are both in school for the same thing, so they get, like, super excited that they can kind of bond over that. So um, I actually went to college for psychology as well, so I thought that was kind of cool. So I look forward to seeing how they tie that into it if they kind of go in with, you know, it's all in your head, like, it's all mental, like, this didn't really happen. And that's kind of what the roommate says is, like, oh, ghosts aren't real, these aren't real. And then she comes to find out that, what all these rumors are actually did come true and they're actually they are real and what you know these students that have passed away um you know all of them have it's like there's something going on there, so. yeah there are definitely some some ghostly spirits uh haunting this dorm or this dorm room and i'm curious if it's gonna be like Oh, everybody that was in your room particularly mm -hmm. is who this happened to. If it's but. just going to be them or if it's going to be, like, the whole school mm -hmm. kind of situation. But it is, I, I'm i always, like, when I see the word Banshee in something, I'm automatically in because we know that that means the ghost is angry. And so I'm like, oh, this is going to be angry ghost mm -hmm. in a college setting, which is already one of those places where, you know, like, there's always the urban legends around yeah. every college campus. There's always like, so many emotions going on that they can feed off of, too, mm -hmm. that, you know, they oh. can just a lot of students that they can go about. So I think that'll be interesting. And I, too, felt like it wasn't, it wasn't too long and it wasn't too mm -hmm. short. So, like, it had a good breaking point of, okay, this is, like, a good stopping point to figure out what is going to happen next. Yeah, and I'm I'm glad you brought up the psychology thing because I didn't even think about it because this all these ghosts are very angry and so like it could go in the direction of like the sixth sense and she could become like a ghost therapist for all of these angry she people could, yeah and, like put them all back or maybe like as she like you said like maybe it'll all be in her head in the end maybe and, like, it happens to her maybe and I'm just really curious now like is she going to be having these breakdowns like throughout the whole book. And is it going to be something we don't think is happening? But it was a really good, solid start. Yeah, like, I think it was a good start as well. And I like the design of the characters that they, they have a few clips in there of them coming back as, like, what they would look like as ghosts. And that character design was very cool, I thought. So, yeah. And I really... interesting. Yeah, and I like the roommate. I like that the roommate is, like... The voice of reason and yet kind of a jerk at the same time. Yeah. So you're like, do I wanna do I wanna Do rely? I like her or do yeah. I not like her? Is yeah. she supportive or is she not supportive? We don't really know yet. So yeah. she's on this, oh let's be friends because we you know, we have the same degree. Like I wanna be your friend because we're roommates, but also like those aren't real. Yeah. So we'll see how that plays out if she has a change of heart or if she's just gonna be that bitter roommate that just doesn't support so we'll see there's so much in that issue i cannot wait to see what happens next and speaking of, of dead people and seeing them uh mm. dead, dead fellows issue one from scout comics bringing out all kinds of dead people at mm -hmm. scout this week uh this is a story of a young boy who um not not again same kind of age probably in that like early early mid 20s um or maybe even younger but he signs a lease for an apartment and the we the lease is really strange because it's like oh you'll remain here forever not like you'll remain yeah here. It, the way that he he even like quotes it and it, the way that he quotes it it sounds like super weird yeah I'm like that 
He, 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 tries to, he tries to question it. Yeah, it's like right here. He tries to question it um, on this bottom panel, like right over here. He tries to question it and, and he even quotes it and the guy's like, so are you going to sign it? Like, it, I like the character tones in this because mm -hmm. you have some who are like they care for him, but they're kind of annoyed that he's there and they're kind of like rude about it, but yeah. it's kind of like in a... Yeah. funny way in a sense so essentially like he gets into this apartment and he's not the only one that lives there essentially there's a lot yeah. of ghosts who are living in this apartment with him mm -hmm. um it kind of reminds me of being human and a bunch of the shows like that where they move into their apartment and there's a ghost in there and they're kind of just that. you do <laughs> we've never discussed that before <laughs> We should have a conversation about that. We will now, because yes. that's one of my favorite shows. <laughs> um, but that's kind of what it reminded me of, because it's like you have this ghost who's like, oh, like, yeah. I live here. And then you have this other ghost who's like, me too. And then there's just suddenly all these ghosts. And he's like, well, I, I can't take this. Like, I'm getting out. I gotta yeah. get out of here. And they're like, oh, not again. We can't have another one. And it's I love it because it's, well, it's from his point of view. All of the cast mm -hmm. of characters of the ghosts are almost like, Moving into the Casper house and having the three... And like, they don't want him there ones. because, you know, she's like, well, there's not enough room for you. Like, everywhere else is taken. So, it, it's, you know, do they care about him as in they don't want to see him die? Or is it they don't... They care about him because they just don't want to deal with another entity being there. Yeah. This one is funny... Uh, Banshees is definitely yeah. your horror. This is like your comedy horror. This yeah. is like if the, you know, the Shaun of the Dead people like made uh, the horror equivalent of any of, or the comedy equivalent of any of these tropes. But because it's definitely that you can hear all of the, the humor in each of the ghosts. They all have, like you said, a very mm -hmm. strong personality immediately. And it's like, okay, you've got a lot that you want to tell us. Ghost, go on. Like, here's yeah. your Yeah, and I actually had to go back like, the first few panels, I had to actually go back and re-look at them, because I was confused. I was like, which is the main character? Like, which is the, is he a ghost now? Or <laughs> is it, you know, because they show him in, like, a certain clip, and I was like, is, is that now? Or is that in the future? Or, like, can he see that? You yeah. Because that's clearly him, and can he, can he see this? Is that what's freaking him out? You know, so I had to go through and read it again, so the illustration is very, it keeps you kind of on your toes, and Absolutely. And a, a big week for Scout. We've kind of had, like, yeah, a, a, lot. A, a lot of books. And I know, like, the small press publishers had a lot of delays in, in their books coming out recently um, just because of printing processes. But Scout, their printer was destroyed by Hurricane Ian because mm. uh, Scout is in Fort Myers. Mm. And, mm -hmm. and so is their printer. And uh, their printer had so many problems. And so we had a little lull where a lot of, they said a lot of their new books were going to be delayed. And I feel like we're finally getting to all, see those. all yeah. of them. Yeah, at absolutely. Like one time. And I think people kind of forget that, like, with them being in Fort Myers and the hurricane being so long ago that, like, they're still. Because I, I went to school in Fort Myers. That's where I went to college. So, you know, it, like, hit home for me a lot. But a lot of people don't realize that, like, they're still, like, getting effects from it. And we're seeing that now with all these comics just now yeah. coming out. And we're just getting, like, a bombardment of all of them, which is, like, cool to see. Yeah. And it's great that they're able to finally get, you know, get running and get what they need to get out. And you went down there to help clean up for I a did. Of I yeah. did, yeah. I did um, a lot of extra work. Uh, we went down to Northport and kind of Fort Myers area to do some relief work. So it was very heartwarming um, and to see kind of what what was the damage. And I think that was we're I'm very grateful, I think, for, for where we're at. So yeah. uh, and speaking of where we're at, yeah. uh, we have Florida Man issue one from American Mythology Productions. <sighs> so. This is the Florida Man. This is the Florida Man, mm -hmm. um, and it is the story of three people: um, the Florida Man, his best friend, and his girl. And this particular <laughs> issue is all about them trying to raise money to get his girlfriend out of jail. Out of jail. Um, now, again, again, because she. This is this happens frequently. This is she's got she's got some problems. She's always you know she's always mouthing off to the cops when they pull her over too, so she gets arrested. Um, yeah, but. It's, it's a very funny story, very much exactly uh, what, you what you would expect, except we have some things we need to say. These don't feel like Florida man being people yes. in Florida and somebody who 
deals with Florida man all the time. Yeah. These uh, are this feels more like um we always say this feels like more like Louisiana man or like Alabama or I'm from West Virginia. So um it reminds like me it reminds me a little bit of home. Um so it was it was um I was like this is very it was very entertaining. Um yeah, it was just like yeah. how Florida are we getting here? Yeah. I mean, we do have gators. We do have gators. But But I, it was the tone I think yeah. it was not the tone, it was the way that things were worded. And mm-hmm. maybe it's just from where I'm from. What I'm reading this, I'm reading it in the accent. Um which makes not it that even, she has one. I do. <laughs> I found that out the other day. I heard myself <laughs> talking and I was like, oh, okay. Um I do still have a little bit of an accent that has come out at times. I don't like to admit it, but it's there. Um, but, you know, I did. I was, like, reading it in, like, you know, that country slang that, in the twang. And, and I was like, oh, okay, this is not Florida. No, and I... Because we don't really have... Like, Floridians no. don't... Unless you are, like, up north closer to, like, Alabama, Louisiana. Most of the time, it's just... It, it's not a huge, huge yeah. language difference here. So... Yeah, so I... find an appropriate one. I have family... Like, I'm from Texas. I have family in East Texas. They have pet gators that are, like, in the... <laughs> and they... I read this as if they were talking the whole time. Yeah. I was like, this feels like that. So it's kind of like... A lot like of a the, southern man. Yeah, it's just kind of southern man. And if you have, if you're looking for, like, and maybe as we go on, we'll see more of this. Because I read the letter from the, the writer in the back, and he said he kind of based it off of all the Florida man stories that came out, which. Uh, yeah, like, because you always, it's always kind of like the running joke of like, oh, uh, yeah, today a Florida man. And then it's some, you know, outrageous <laughs> news story and you're like of course it's a florida man you know and i learned why that was before we moved here because i was like everybody kept making the joke like oh y'all are gonna be florida man now and one of our customers in austin who was from florida was telling us that it's a state law that all of the crimes that are reported they're all public records to be public records they are and you can get any you know we we deal with that a lot you can any record and you know the like the news and stuff can like listen to our radio so like they always know what's going on even before like you know it comes out because they can hear what's going on so so um, we've had a lot of like interactions like personally with like animal like we had an emu that got loose the other day and we had to chase it down um that's not a thing that you would think to do as a cop um but we had to chase an emu and then the other day we had like a goat a loose goat we've had gators we've had we've had to do it all but that was an emotional support goat. That was an emotional support yeah, goat. I, yeah, I, I we've dealt that with too. we've dealt with unemotional support goats before. <laughs> they're, they're not they're, they're not the greatest. Yeah, so I'm waiting to see. Um, issues two and three are actually mm-hmm. already out. We got one and three, and we didn't get two yet. Uh, we got one and three at the same time. So I'm waiting for two to come in because I want to see more of the Florida man stereotypes. If play it's, it's going to be like a whole different story, are we going to deal with different characters yeah. or is it going to be the same characters with like, okay, here's just another story that they've gotten themselves yeah. into. There are novels though. So it was a novel first. It was originally written a, as a comic. He was trying to write it as a comic book and then it got so long that he decided to turn it into a novel. And so I'm curious to read the novels um, because I want to know what, mm-hmm. like, you put into a novel of this Florida man. And again, I want to know, is it just going to say stu- Southern Man? Because it's still funny if you just called it Southern yeah, Man. It still, still would be movie. hilarious. But, uh, <laughs> Phil says Florida Man is an idea. He is a symbol. <laughs> um, he is. Yes. Um, so I, I would be curious. I definitely want to check it out and, and see where the story goes and see, if it's just Southern Man in Florida is the representation of that because we do have the Florida Man stories, or is it going to have some, like, Florida-specific references yeah. or any of those kinds of things? Mm-hmm. But it's still funny either way. Oh, absolutely. This is a good read. Uh, we have And We Love You, which is a one-shot from Scout Comics. Uh, this is a big old book. Yeah, um, this is a good one. Uh, I really enjoyed this one because, again, it... it is a beginning and an end. Um, the first book I read this week, I was like, I got very angry. I was like, <laughs> wait, that's the end? I was like, this is not, this is not okay. I want to know what happens. And then you have to wait. So 
this one I enjoyed being able to read from like beginning and then there was like an ending to it and it kind of like all it was inclusive so that was really cool to be able to to read yeah and this is um Commander Rao who is an ongoing character in Scout um kind of gets some little one shots here and there um I think there might be a whole trade of stories for Commander Rao um but this is their time in the military with uh the love of their life and they're, it's the meeting, it's the falling in love, it's the being separated, it's the coming back together, it's the the whether or not it, it kind of works. And it's like, mm-hmm. it's kind of almost like Legend of Korra where you could almost say like, there's like, like what's the relationship as it grows, like in different directions. Mm-hmm. But you get the whole thing and it's so, it's so beautifully done. Like this would be an easy thing to adapt into a movie yeah um or a short and visually film. i mean in this page is a good example of that just what like the art in it is just some of them are just so stunning and they're, they're they gives their expressions and personalities uh through you don't have to read it you kind of understand what's going on so yeah they do a lot of the little gestures and little expressions like you said that are like oh i know who this person is and how they're going to react to things mm-hmm. now uh very quickly and it's a really really beautiful love story yeah. uh, mixed in together yeah yeah there you go and it's the whole thing it's ten dollars but honestly it's almost the same length as a trade because it is so long, so it's a thick, oversized book. It's almost like a little mini trade. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're going to read it, and you're going to fall in love with the characters, and then your heart's going to break, and then you're going to hope for the best. Yeah. Um, and even if you think that it feels like a thick book, because it is pretty thick, and that's like when I first I was like, oh, this is so much to read. Um, there are a lot of like double-page pictures and stuff that is just not a lot of dialogue in it, but you still understand what's going on because it's just, it's, it's just pictures. So if you're afraid that, like, Oh, that seems really thick for me. Oh, that seems like a lot of reading. It's really not. Like, it. you can follow it very well, even if you think it might be a little bit overwhelming. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I feel the same way. <laughs> Sometimes. Um, I'm going to go... We'll do these two, um, and then we'll go back to that. So, um, which I know, I don't think you read these, so I'll, I'll go through. You can do this. Yeah, I didn't um, Yeah, this is um, from It's Alive. It's Roach Mill number one. This is a reprint of a classic comic story, a story from a, a while back. Um, Roach Mill, or not Roach Mill, It's Alive also is doing the re- reprints of the um, dinosaur book that I just recently brought that was about the, um, you know, reluctant T-Rex. This is the story of a man who, I'm going to hand this yeah, over to you, good. who is a detective. Uh, he is an exterminator. Excuse me, he's not a detective. He's an exterminator in a world that has been overrun by giant bugs um basically like the bounty hunters are the exterminators like as the bugs grew bigger and bigger the bounty hunters uh the exterminators kind of became these bounty hunters that go out and fight people um and kind of deal with all these bugs and so he is he's been taken out of it he's like off now he's the gruff guy coming back and he gets in trouble for exterminating the wrong thing and ends up in prison and so, and everybody in prison is a bug. People, he's probably led to their arrest and them being there. And so now you've got that, oh, I'm in prison with all the people I put here story kind of starting. And that's kind of where we leave off with this one is like, well, what is this exterminator going to do now that he's in jail with all of these bugs? Like, are the bugs going to, you know, tear him apart? Are they going to, yeah. are they going to come to work together? Are they going to jailbreak? Um, it's such a crazy, like, I mean, if you made bugs, Uh, If you kind of, like, let the bugs take over in Men in Black, like, where would we be in 10 years? Yeah, this would be it. Yeah. (laughs) This would be that. It would be Roach Mill. (laughs) Um, But that's issue one. It's a reprint, like I said, of an old comic um, starting to come back. So if you never heard of it, this is obviously your time to jump in because they're starting at the beginning and and, and just telling you that same old story again. Uh, And then we have... Based on the Ubisoft video game, uh, we have Skull and Bun- Bones Savage Storm, uh, number one from Dark Horse Comics. And this is uh, a game that I have not played uh, because I, I very rarely play video games. Have you played it? You probably... No. 
Um, no. no. Okay. I had to I'm look at my... I know. Yeah, we're, we're looking like, around. Like, have we played this? <laughs> uh, I was like, it doesn't ring any bells. Um, yeah. We usually play older, you know, your nostalgia games. So, yeah. Um, um, not the newer. All right. Well, for those of you who are pirate fans, even if you didn't re- uh, play the video games, this is your... Honestly, this is the most uh, standard pirate story. It's super classic. You've got two pirate ships at war with each other in the very beginning. There is a woman on one who is kind of working with the captain. She's got he. They've got some secret information. They've got the map that's going to lead to this magical thing. And uh, the ships get in their war. Both of them crash on opposite sides of the island. And our young girl wakes up on the island alone with the map. And she's like, okay, I guess I have to figure this out. What do I do? And um, when she runs into some people and they're like, hey, why don't we kill you? And she's like, no, you shouldn't kill me. And they're like, well, why not? And she's Mm -hmm. like, I have this map. I was told to find you. And maybe it's you. I don't know. And so then they kind of go on. You know, they're starting to set up this adventure. And, of course, the other pirates are on the same island so now we've got conflict uh brewing ahead so if you're a fan of pirate stories this isn't like the funny like pirate, there's no jack sparrow like telling you jokes in between this is just like the classic pirates yeah. like at war against each other um adventures like it'd be a very good game though yeah i bet it is I bet Probably it is, is a fun game it's classic skull and crossbones that's what you got um from Kyle Starks again, who we mentioned earlier today, is I Hate This Place, issue six from Image Comics Skybound imprint. Uh, this is in the number ones because this is the start of the new arc. Um, if you didn't read I Hate This Place, it's volume one, it is in trade format. I'm not going to show it to you today because I only have the original name variant, so I can't bring it on this show. Um, but I Hate This Place is the story of a girl who inherits a ranch from her aunt and she tells her partner that they need to go out to live on this ranch just for a little bit so they can get it all in order to sell the ranch and the night that they get there they find this little room that's got one chair a tv and some dvds all along the wall and they watch the tape that's labeled don't watch because what else would you do with your time I mean, why not? And it's the story of what's going on on this ranch. And they find out that the ranch is not just haunted. It's overrun. There are, like, giant spiders. There's aliens. There's ghosts. There's anything and everything that, like, like killer monsters, whatever crazy thing that you would see in a horror or sci-fi movie, it exists on this ranch. And the secret catch is is that once you uh, take over living on the ranch, you cannot leave until you die. And so now they're stuck here, and they're trying to figure out how to get out of it. And we thought that all of these monsters and all of these creatures were the bad thing. And then volume two starts, and what do I always say is monsters, ghosts, and creatures are... Always bad, but nothing's worse than humans. And in this volume oh, one, we find uh, one of the one of the uh, female leads. Uh, her father shows up to the ranch to bring her home, um, and the hate that he spews and the attacks that he does just reminds us that uh, you know sometimes the monster is the man. And this issue is going to get. It's going to be great. Uh, Kyle Starks is killing it with all of these books like this. But if you didn't read volume one, read it, get into the crazy, and then read volume two and see how that's going to open up really fast. I'm going to take a drink. All right. Our last new number one is also a one-shot. It's All Night and Every Day from Aftershock Comics. I also need to read because we were looking forward to this and I fell asleep. Right, you got your like one hour of sleep and it was... I did, I got like a whole solid hour and I have to work really... I gotta get up like 4 a.m. So I know, I know. We're, we're, we're trying. We're, <laughs> we're Again, we're, we're powering through. Yeah, the uh, wine will help me sleep. That's, yes. that's where I'm going with. Right that's, now. <laughs> you know, we gotta go with that. Um, this one shot is actually, it's a really great story. This is another one that kind of bordered on that, like whether or not it should be a pick of the week, but I honestly didn't do it. So Jamie doesn't have to look at the whole story and get spoiled because I know she wants to read it. Um, this is the story of a woman who at the very beginning of the 
the story is talking about how two years ago her fiance didn't show up for the wedding and she's convinced that he has been kidnapped and something bad has happened to him and at this point everybody's like it's been two years he's not coming back also except that he probably just left you at the aisle um or at the altar and so her friends take her to a party and when she walks in to a room at the party in this house uh suddenly she finds herself in a completely different time and uh, every room that she goes to leads her into a different period of time. It leads her to different people. And within this, she finds somebody who kind of helps her deal with the loss of her of her boyfriend um, or her fiance and helps her deal with everything that has been going on. And she's kind of trapped in this house and she can't get out of it. And the further she goes, the more dangerous it gets and the harder it gets for her to deal with all of her grief. And everything and so it's just really this beautiful allegory for how when we feel trapped by our emotions and we can't get mm. out of them and we just keep following falling further and further into them just going through the same cycle every time and like everything like oh this is meant to distract you from it but it's actually pulling you down and oh this is meant to distract you but you'll forget about the memory and you don't want that and they, they keep having that, like, flat-out conversation. And she just has to keep working her way through this house trying to find a way out of it um, and trying to find her way out of that grief. It's a really, really great story. Um, I, I actually, like, the, the writer of it is uh, Ray Fox, who did Constantine and Gotham by Midnight. And so I wasn't really sure, like, if this was going to be one of those where I was, like, oh, you're going to tell this great. Like, I've never read, like, a one-shot from this person. And I yeah. know I feel like that's, like, the hardest thing to do is tell me one story in, like, a single issue. Mm -hmm. And this uh, was such a good one. If you didn't pick it up, it's one. I know we talk about this on the show all the time. You get, you see the prestige format, and you freak out because there's nothing to store it in. There's nowhere to put it. Uh, you don't want to buy it. But you know what? Buy it and put it on your coffee table and make it a coffee yeah, table. That's what we do. You we know, can't figure out a place to put it. We just put it on the coffee table. To put it on the coffee table. And know that prestige format books aren't going away. And it's like Matt always says, it's like reading a book in IMAX. You get, you no, get a bigger image. No, that's true because, yeah, you get a bigger image and everything's a lot clearer and it's a little bit bigger. So, I don't know about that. And feelings are big. And so this shows you how big your feelings can be and how overwhelming they are. And that's the point of the prestige format. So feelings. All right. We've got, we're going to say 2.5 picks of the week because one of them is a zero slash first issue of, of a book. Um, so really it's two picks of the week, but one of them has two issues. Um yeah, Nick says there is a way to store them because we taught him to put them on the box on the side. That's right, Nick. You can put your prestige format books on the side in your long in your short boxes and long boxes. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, first up, picks of the week wise, I'll hold one and you can hold yeah. the other. And really, we'll just show the inside of this one, I guess. And we'll. Uh, uh, but we have Snow White Zombie Apocalypse issues zero and issue one. From Scout Comics, technically Scout, uh, technically issue one came out this week, and the zero issue I just ordered more of so that people knew that there was a zero issue. But I know you were really excited about this, so yeah, I was. So I, I just happened to pick this was in the top of the stack that I started reading, um, and I she had said that you know, there's a zero and you know there's a zero one and, and then a number one, and so I was like, oh, okay, cool. Didn't really think much about it, so I just happened to start on Zero. That was the first book that I read. And like I said, I am uh, new to just comic books. I'm more like a TV fan, so I always am expecting like a beginning, middle, and an end. Um, so when I started reading this one, I was like, I got all the way to the end, I said, what? And I got a little upset, because I was like, this is, this is the end? <laughs> And I was like, I want to know what happens, you know? I wanted to know what, what we were dealing with and what was going to happen. And then it just ended. It did. Just it just end. ended. And then I looked over and I said, oh, I have a number one. I'm going to find out what happens. And then it is nothing. Does, mm -hmm. not, does not start where this one ended. It is like a completely different time, a completely different <laughs> whole thing. And I was like, well, yeah. I don't know if. You know, number two is going to come back and go, you know, correspond with number zero, or if two is going to go with number one. 
Very good though, I was telling her. I was reading these out loud too, again, stay awake. Uh, it helps me focus a little bit more. Sometimes I can remember things better when I read them out loud. So I caught myself reading them out loud in the different voices per the characters because the characters were so great. Um, that I just, I couldn't help myself. I, I really enjoyed all the characters in, in both of these, so um, this one's not too cool. And um, the Zero Issue has a subtitle, so the Snow White Zombie Apocalypse, Reign of the Blood-Covered King. And the, totally didn't read that. <laughs> the Zero... <laughs> didn't read the part part. I know, I actually didn't notice there was a subtitle the first time I read it either. Um, the Zero Issue focuses on the king um, and the story of Jack and the Beanstalk. And so the Zero Issue starts with Jack the Giant Slayer coming and asking for a, a reward for slaying the giant from the king. And the king is just like, no, I'm not going to. You know what? Your reward is that you can go out and slay the rest of the giants. And uh, also you owe this man so money for his them. property. They didn't believe that he had actually did it. So they didn't believe it. And they were like, and even if he did, who cares? Well, now we, got, now we won't encourage other people to slay yeah. giants for money. And so you think it's just going to be like a fantasy, like fairy tale, humorous, again, like a Shrek kind of story yeah. where we're making fun of all the, the fairy tale char characters. And then this king goes out on this mission and he sa he gets saved by a Merlin and a Merlin type magi magician. And yeah, there's some zombies and then some faces get eaten. And yeah. then, um, I don't know where Jack, Jack yeah. shows up again and just goes on his merry way. And then we open up with issue one and we are following um a princess type character who is kind of slaying her way through the zombie world and we come across a prince and i really thought that that was going to be snow white and she was like yeah uh, uh she, she was, was like the huntsman kind of thing with that and then that's not the case at all so this book takes lots of twists yeah, and turns it does. as you read it does along. not go the way that you think it's going to go no. um, so i'm very excited to see what happens because i i'm really invested in it now and i want to know what happens on both of them. Plus, like I said, I really enjoyed the characters, mm -hmm. um, especially in Number Zero. The characters were just great. The little like magician guy, loved him. He <laughs> was his, just so sweet. His partner and how oh. they're like, "Oh, that's not my wife," and they're like, "Yeah, of course not, because she's too hot for you." And he was yeah. like, "No, we just don't believe in them. We don't the believe act in marriage." marriage. <laughs> and she's we're like, dwelling mates. <laughs> yeah, uh, it is. It, the humor in this is fantastic. Uh, this is written by Britton Lingle. And uh, I'm so excited to see not only where this goes, but something else from, from Britain at this point because I, I love the humor that yes. they're bringing to this story for sure. Um, and also, I want to know what other characters are going to show up because we've now had Jack and we've had like our little warlock and we've had mm -hmm. a couple of like princessy characters. And, and you know, there's also like the Snow White of it all. And Rapunzel was in there too. Rapunzel. So, you know, there's a lot. A lot going on with all these characters, and I'm here for it. Um, if you read Briar and you liked the darker side of a fairy tale, but you were like, that's a little too intense for me, this is your uh, modern comedy version. This is your zombie land mm -hmm. uh, in the fairy tale world compared to like the seriousness that was uh, Briar. Both great books. There's a place for both of them in this world. Um, but if you are looking to laugh, and you're like a Disney fan, and you're a zombie fan, this is your trifecta Absolutely. of everything you're looking for. Yeah. Or if you just are getting into comics and getting to, into different titles, it's a really good one to read as well. So I really enjoyed it, and I usually am very into just like superheroes and stuff like that, so it was very interesting for me. I kept me entertained the entire time, which is hard. Guess we're adding that to Jamie's pull list. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, you know what? Actually, yes. Can we just throw that in there? <laughs> Because I won't remember. <laughs> That's true. I will I will add it to your list. Um, and then our other pick of the week, duh. Um, you didn't need you don't need me to say it out loud if you're watching the show. You don't need to say me to say it out loud if you were at Comics Pro last week. You definitely don't need yeah. to say it out loud if you work at Oni Press. Day. But here it is. Uh, Pink Lemonade, issue six from Oni Press. Uh, the six issues of my happiness in this book. Um this was one of my top 22 books of 2022. It was in my top five. I said I wasn't ranking them in actual order, but let's be honest, I was. Um, and Pink Lemonade, it is it is one of the most positive books. If you know me, I love books that inspire hope in people. Um, I think that that's mm. just exactly what we should do with comic books. I think that's part of the point. Um, and... This one manages to do it in every every single page. Uh, 
It is the story of a, a woman who wakes up um, on, like, a park bench and is like, I don't know if I'm even from this planet. I don't know if this is, like, I don't know who I am. I just think that I look like Pink Lemonade and I'm going to call myself that. And she wears this motorcycle outfit and drives around on her little Vespa. And in the very beginning, she meets these people who are fans of a character called O.J. Bot, who's one of those childhood, beloved superhero, like, kind of characters. And... That kind of inspires who she wants to be and how she wants to help people over the next six issues. And along the way, her identity gets stolen for a film. And she kind of helps like an Arnold Schwarzenegger style character get out of making action films and in touch with himself. Um, And at this point, the sleazy Hollywood director who stole her identity as making a movie is trying to... Um, bring that movie to to fruition. It's having its uh, its big premiere night, and Pink Lemonade is throwing a counter party to it to expose him for all of the lies and all of the things that he's done. Um, and seriously, everything that you would check off at the end of a feel good movie to happen, like yeah. bad guy gets his, like this happens, like this person learns their lesson, like you can go through and check it all off, and just be so happy with it. Uh, but also you get this incredible uh, Nick Canetti art and writing. Yes. Um, oh, my gosh. Uh, Nick. It, it, I mean, follow Nick on Instagram, too. Like, if you it, it's like Fudgy Nick 1, I think there's one at the end. Um, but seriously, follow Nick. The art is amazing. We're going to see more of Nick coming from a new Oni Press book very, very soon. Um, but this art... Uh, everybody that I show this book to, I'm like, oh, have you read Pink Lemonade? And they're like, no, the cover kind of got my attention, though. And then well, that's what, like, literally what I did. I said, yeah. this cover is so cool. And she explained it to me. I was like, that sounds amazing. Yeah. And you, like, open it up and you're like, whoa, whoa, what yeah. is this book? Like? I was so uh, taken aback by just, like, the graphics and, you know, there's all the design it was just super cool it's such a beautiful story i cannot wait i'm probably going to over order trades so just be prepared for me to suggest the trade paperback to everybody because i love it um i know i'm already getting the eyes from matt of like don't don't go crazy um <laughs> hey i got the eyes when i over ordered trades of canto and i sold out of them four times so <laughs> he's nodding in the room yeah i'm like i i just feel good positive books everybody needs them honestly this book is for all ages i have subscribers of this book who are as young as five and I have subscribers of this book who are in like their 60s and 70s like and everybody in between loves this book if you actually pick it up and read it I know I heard a lot of people say oh we didn't even like we didn't carry that book we didn't think it would be a big seller and I'm here to tell you you should be reading it whether your LCS has it or not find a store that does grab pink lemonade um and if you need to call us and get it like whatever you need to do everybody should read this book it's fantastic this is the last issue it's wonderful you're gonna love it read pink lemonade okay now we are gonna fly through these these are other in stocks for the week um a big thing happened this week that you may not have known about but you may have an idea of um Alex Ross Timeless variants are back. So everybody knows Alex Ross Timeless mural of all the superheroes at Marvel offices was turned into covers a couple years back. They went crazy. Well, now Alex Ross is doing the villains. We're going to hold up both of these really fast just so you know. Um, They are back. Every Marvel title for a minute is going to have, like, each one's going to get their their Timeless variant. Like, there's a MODOK coming. There's a Venom coming. Um... There is, there's a, oh, the Galactus one is so cool. Um, There are so many amazing, like, Marvel villain that you love. They're getting a timeless variant. Uh, So make sure you let us know if that's the cover that you're going to want on stuff. Because these things, once they come in, they disappear. And it is so hard to find them after that. I think all of the hero ones are, like, $10 or more a piece at this point anywhere in the world. So um, just know that. Uh, also out this week is Venom issue 17. I'm going to hold that while you drink. <laughs> Venom Sorry. 17. No, you're good. Drink. Drink your drink. <laughs> uh, also, X-Force issue 38. You can just toss those that way. We're not going to open these. We're just going to look at them. Uh, Rogue and Gambit are back with issue one. Uh, Mike's nodding. Was it good? Was it great? Do people need to read it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, nice. King Spawn issue 20 is out. 
Uh, Spider Man Unforgiven. What? Oh, it's got that thick card. Yeah, I was gonna say it's. It's, it it's feels, all in the cover. Yeah, with like a bunch Ooh, of Ooh, I like that dress on the back. Um, Spider-Man Unforgiven Issue 1, which is a, a one-shot, really. Uh, Star Wars Issue 32. Han Solo and Chewbacca Issue 10. This is a big Star Wars week. I'm just going to warn you right now. Uh, <laughs> Yoda Issue 4. Uh, Star Wars Hidden Empire Issue 4. And if you haven't seen it, there's Women History Month variants on all the Star Wars titles, and they're all Peach Momoko covers. So if you're a Peach Momoko fan, be <laughs> checking those. Uh, Star Wars High Republic The Blade Issue 3. Action Comics is back with uh, t- uh, Issue 1051. This is part of that uh, Dawn of the DC Universe. Um We've got the, which is the relaunch. I guess I should explain that. It's the relaunch. You've got Power Girl is back. All of the people within the, like, Superverse um, are back in the stories. Uh, Action Comics is going to kind of be the way Batman has Detective, and it's usually Bat Family stories. Now Action Comics is actually going to be kind of like a super family story, um, and then Superman's relaunching. Uh, The Riddler, Year One, Issue 3. This is the Paul Dano written Riddler story that aligns with the Batman movie. So if you liked the Robert Pattinson, Paul Dano Batman movie that just came out, Paul Dano himself is writing this. This is the backstory of how he got into character, like the character of the Riddler that he plays. This is the backstory that he kind of made up for that character while playing him. Uh, Punchline issue five. Uh, from my my girl Punchline's Gotham Game. This is the first uh series that Punchline has starred in on her own. That's not like a backup story. So. Uh, I am Iron Man issue one. For those who have been asking when they could jump back in on Iron Man at a new number one. Um, Hallow's Eve issue one. Uh, if you're a Spider Man fan, you've met Hallow's Eve in Spider Man. Um, and you saw that she has the coolest outfit. I'm so stoked by her outfit. It's so awesome. I cannot wait to somehow make it someday. But also, she is now on her own title, so make sure you are grabbing that. Uh, oh, that is awesome. It's so cool. She's like the hobgoblin. Uh, I have the thing for anything that has, like, gloves. Like, my Gwenum and myself both are covered in your fingers, so you can't do anything else. You but can't, look cool. you can't you can't look you just look cool you which it look looks cool. amazing it looks great it looks super cool <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna be able to eat which is fine you know whatever um, you know you can't flip through comics you can't Mm-mm. you can't open your phone you know none of that so yeah. I tried that I'm like using all the fingers you know my it's friend just not uses his, my friend Nigel uses his <gasps> nose when he's Spider Man and that's how he opens his phone I didn't even think about that earlier yeah I've struggled for a solid ten minutes. Yeah, phone nose. I can also and teach you how to make your phone, your costume work. Yeah, and I can't, I can't, like, un- unzip you know, yourself. Yeah. yeah. It's a struggle. Um, and then flexible, it's a struggle. From DC Comics, Harley Quinn issue 27 is out. Don't forget, Ginny Frizen is doing Harley Quinn covers now, so make sure you're getting them. Ghost Rider issue 12. Human Target issue 12, which means this is the wrap up of Tom King and Greg, Greg Smallwood's uh, amazing story human target and a lot of people wait until the end for a tom king book so here it is we have wrapped up cosmic ghost writer has returned new series new number one written by the amazing stephanie phillips uh this is a big brand new adventure for cosmic ghost writer it is a not a one shot this is actually going to keep going for a minute so get in on it captain america sentinel of liberty issue 10 uh DC Universe, Lazarus Planet, Assault on Krypton. This is a second print. I brought it because people are always asking me about second prints. We do get them. I wanted you to see that. Uh, Batman, The Audio Adventures, Issue 5. This is based on the old radio plays. Um, Batman vs. Robin, Issue 5. I love this next cover. Detective Comics 1069. This is a J.H. Williams III cover, and you can tell when you see that gloriousness. Oh, my God, I love it. Um, Buffy the Last Vampire Slayer. This is a special, so this is a one-shot. Uh, Unbreakable Red Sonia, issue four. The Walking Dead Deluxe, issue 58. This is the in-color uh, reprints of Walking Dead. If you didn't know, this is the 20-year anniversary of Walking Dead this wow. year. And Invincible. It's crazy. It's also the 60th anniversary of both X-Men and the Avengers. Wow. Right. No, it's crazy, crazy. Sandman Universe, Dead Boy Detectives, issue three, I think. Um, Sergeant Rock versus Army of the Dead, issue six of six. 
Uh, this is actually written by Bruce Campbell. I just remember that I have a subscriber that just told me like two days ago that they love everything Evil Dead, so they need to get this yeah. series because Bruce Campbell is actually writing that himself. Um, Barbarella is back, and this is issue cover. one. I know that Derek chews. It's super cute. Uh, Wildcats, issue four. Matthew Rosenberg bringing back the classic Wildcats. Uh, Murder World Game Over. So the series of one-shots from Marvel that were all interconnected with the Murder World is finally wrapping up. Star oh, cool cover. I know. I like that, that classic 8-bit Really great video in the game, game room. Just yeah. saying. That'd be great. <laughs> if you didn't get that. <laughs> uh, Star Girl, The Lost Children, issue 4 of 6. I love that she's reading Flash comics in it. Uh, Tim Drake, Robin, issue 6. And I love this cover. Look at how cute he is. Oh, is I love all the cover, like the colors and stuff. So cute. Uh, Blue Beetle Graduation Day, issue 4. If you don't know... This is great for those of you who are excited for the Blue Beetle movie, but what's also cool is that, that there is a Spanish version of that comic. Every issue has a complete Spanish version. Um, so if you ever if you want it in Spanish, just ask your LCS to order you the Spanish version of it. Um, and we do have them here as well. Uh, Shazam! Fury of the Gods special. Shazam! Lee Matters. Uh, this is this is your movie tie-in uh, issue. Okay. They always do a movie special. This is your oversized movie special for the new Shazam movie coming out soon. Which I, I didn't uh, know what was the thing. I was reading like all these comics have the new the preview for the Shazam in the back, and I was like, I love Shazam. How do I remember that? Yeah, because I love movie. the guy who plays Shazam. There's another movie coming out, and like. Two, uh, yeah, two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. It's seventeen. Yeah, only because I've seen it on like seventeen. <laughs> You're like, because I read so many comics. This week. <laughs> uh, and then also from DC Comics, uh, Ruby is back with DC Ruby. We've had DC vs. Ruby. Now they're working together. Um, that's super cool. We've got some trades, and then I got something else that I'm going to show off. So uh, I told you that Radiant Black is a book series that you should check out. There it is, $9.99 for the first six issues if you want to catch up and jump into the massive verse, which you do. Um, check it out right there. Uh, also, new trades out this week is Batman the Imposter. Whole thing, uh, the Ma Madison Tomlin, who is also the writer, uh, one of the writers on the Batman Robert Pattinson movie, uh, writing this story. Um, Never Ender from Sumerian, also the whole thing. And Never Ender is about to do... A, a new, I think it might just be a one-shot, might be another mini-series in the Never Ender world. So if you enjoyed that and you or you didn't get a chance to catch it yet, this is a bunch of uh, teenagers having to fight, literally, like, do, like, like super, like, duels and fights and mm -hmm. stuff in space uh, to survive. So if you haven't read it yet, uh, check it out. Uh, 70, I brought both copies. Uh, 78 miles per hour from Stonebot, uh, Red 5. This is... The world has ended, and uh, you have to keep going, kind of like Mad Max. Like, we got to drive the mm -hmm. cars and stuff, keep moving, but you have to stay at, like, 78 miles per hour. So you're mixing Mad Max and speed together. Um, it gets crazy, all kinds of people, twists and turns. Um, we've got, from Daniel Warren Johnson, the whole collected edition of Do a Powerbomb. So many people have been asking me when this trade was coming out. And so many people, I was like, it's going to be the first week of March. And they could not wait that long. Guess what? Now we're here. We are at the first week of March. And do power bombs out. So now you can read it if you missed it. And you really, really, really want to read this book. If you're a wrestling fan, you definitely have to read it. And if you're not a wrestling fan, it doesn't matter because the story is just that good. Grab, grab a copy of this trade. Um, and lastly... We have the hardcover, The Mini Deaths of Layla Starr from Boom. We very rarely see hardcovers from Boom, but this book definitely deserved it. Uh, it's called a masterpiece on the back, and that's definitely true. This is the story of of the Hindu goddess of death getting fired from her job because a boy is born who is going to stop death with his immortality and, like, supposed to be able to figure that out. And so she is sent to live on Earth and live out her life as a human. And she continuously shows up at different points in this boy's life, planning to kill him and then reconsidering her decision. Uh, we talk about it all the time for the last, like, 
year and a half, two years on this this show, that issue three of The Many Guesses Lay the Star is fantastic, and it's impossible to find. It's told from the point of view of a cigarette that is at a party, and it's super cool to see how they use that in there. Um, such a great book. It's in hardcover now. There are still trade paperbacks available of this book, but if you are somebody who wants a beautiful oversized hardcover of your book, yeah. this is it. It's a you great coffee go. table book. Yeah. I oh. mean, it's gorgeous. The cover is gorgeous. You should, yeah, the inside is great. I'd honestly, buy the Mini Desolate Layla Star hardcover and the Carmen hardcover and just put those two books on your on your coffee table and you'll have the best coffee table. Uh, lastly, before we wrap up, so this Wednesday, which is New Comic Book Day, obviously, and a great day, um, uh, which we're going to talk about what new comics are coming out after this, is also another important day because it's March 8th, and that is International Women's Day. Mm -hmm. And March is Women's History Month. So, first of all, I wanted to bring uh, Voices That Count, which is nine instrument, intimate and dynamic stories about women. Um, there's incredible artists. There's incredible writers working on this, and it's just different stories um, in an anthology format that dissect what it means to be a woman in today's, like, world and with all of the masculinity and all of the ways that the society is ran how does it work and i love that we have these women in the comic book industry doing that because this is an industry that has always been seen as male dominated mm -hmm. um even if it wasn't necessarily the case um when we do our Girl Scout workshops, one of the things we talk about with them is the history of female creators in comic books. Like, we do the history of comics through the eyes of female creators. And um, we talk about how com comics in America, we're not going into to the manga in Japan because that's been centuries. We're not going to talk about that. But comics in America started in 1895 with the comic strip. By 1896, one of the most syndicated comic strips in America was written by a woman. Um, and it is the woman who... Um, we, we saw the rise of the Cupid dolls, which a lot of people have actually had Cupid dolls. They were based off of these characters, the Cupid characters that were used in this comic strip. Um, the woman, the uh, Campbell's, the kids on the Campbell's cans yeah. that, and the Campbell's commercials uh, that were used to be illustrated, they actually also came from a comic strip written in the early 1900s by a woman um, and drawn by a woman. Um, in the very early days of comics, from those very beginnings, we saw mostly... Um, you know, we saw so many women who not only were putting out their comic strips in newspapers like everybody else, but they were actually going to women's magazines. And so women's magazines actually ran comic strips um, as early as like 1905. Wow. And so that was one of the few things that magazines, like few magazines that actually had them outside of newspapers were women's magazines. Um, and up until the Comics Code Authority readership on comic books was half women. So everybody who hears that like, oh, comics are 50% female readership now um, and says, oh, yeah, right, that's never happened or oh, that's new. Just so you know, since 1895, that was actually the case. Mm -hmm. Women were making comics. Women were reading the comics. Um, in the 1940s, when World War II was going on, uh, this was another industry where women took pretty much all of the jobs and came in. And while there were so many women who were already working in comics, they started filling the jobs with other women. And so in 1940s, during World War II, comics were actually predominantly female done. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Comics Code Authority came in and kind of crushed that concept the men came back from war and like kind of like we're like well we have to give these men jobs so even if you already had this job before the men went to war like we're going to push you out like in every other field. yeah um and then you know the comics code authority kind of like pushed out the idea of female characters who had power and that was another one of the things that went away with the comics code authority and so we started seeing a lot of female characters who were just kind of like f flirty and not like yeah. we're kind of just there in the You're background typical. or fridging started very much so in that time period where women were just kind of used to move a male story together, usually like forward, usually through their death. Um, and then the seventies brought back a lot of female in comics. A lot of female creators came in in the night in the eighties to do all of those dark stories. And then of course the nineties kind of pushed them out again uh, because they started over sexualizing women uh, in comics and refused to kind of like give them any of that agency. And now we're back to seeing female and non binary uh, creators really pushing into that. Mm -hmm. Uh, not only indie market, but the mainstream market, we're starting to see like more of an equalness in uh, representation starting to happen. Um, but it's always something that we're continuing to 
to work on and push forward. And so we want to talk about that a lot in the month of March. Voices That Count is a great way to see that from comic creators talking about their experiences. But I think another great thing is to talk to, to female fans about some of their favorite characters um, and some of their favorite stories. So because I knew you were here, Aww. I brought yeah. some of your favorite characters um, that we love. Absolutely. And so Jamie mentioned earlier that Silk is uh, one of her favorite characters. And Silk was on the cover of the newest Spider-Man issue. But like you said, Zilk has another new title coming up. She does. Um, and I think not, not when it's March. It's, not April, it's, but it's I think May. May it's May. it's like two months out from now. So yeah. May is going to be, because I was looking at the upcoming book. So I believe in May she's going to be coming out with a new series. So I'm very excited. And which is, yeah, I'm very excited about it. Yes, I'm excited to see Zilk. If you haven't. Um, gotten to know her yet she is she was bitten by the same spider that peter parker was bitten by in the regular universe um and then kind of raised in a bomb shelter um and left to her own devices and um is kind of a lot better at using the spider powers than than uh peter is uh, like most people with the, let's be honest like most people with the spider powers she's better at using it than peter um check her out there's a lot of really great stories from her like with her origin and everything like that, but we've seen some really great mini series coming come out recently, and we are gonna get a new one starting in May. Uh, speaking of new mini series and spider characters starting, Spider Gwen has Shadow Clones that just started mm -hmm. this week. Um, this is a new issue one for that. If you didn't read the previous Spider Gwen story, uh, Gwen angrily splits herself uh, into a. A bunch of different people. She ends up like getting, she's kind of throwing a little bit of a temper tantrum about how angry she is with different things going on uh, while trying to cross through a dimensional portal and she gets zapped and all of the different pieces of her emotions that she's feeling get spread out over the different multiverse and they all become different superheroes based on characters we like already know. Like so her loyalty becomes Captain like America, but it's Gwen as like a Captain America oh, character cool. and her anger becomes Wolverine. Um, and so she's all the different characters that we know throughout the, the Marvel verse. Um, but she, they're all Gwen versions. And so it's kind of like when, when Raven splits herself as well, like by emotions. Um, but that is now we are dealing with some shadow clones of the different things that happen when Gwen, the repercussions of that world, essentially. Um, and I'm excited we're going to get some great Greg Land covers on all of the issues like we did around the first thing. So uh, check that out. And then, of course, of course, of course, if I'm going to bring uh, one of your favorites, I got to bring the favorite, mm -hmm. who is also my favorite. Uh, Scarlet Witch is back. Wanda has... Her own series ongoing for the first time in, oh my god, years. We haven't had an ongoing time. Wanda since the one with the beautiful David Aja covers. Um, this is, it's Wanda as dealing with being aware of all of the things that people have called her and all of the things that she's done and kind of trying to make amends for all of that by opening up a store. Uh, she runs with Darcy from the MCU. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's kind of trying to provide... Uh, help and assistance to everybody that comes her way and she's got a magic door that people can come into and of course the first issue kind of gave us like oh it's going to be weird like anthology of people we've never heard of and then a cliffhanger for issue one is like hey no it's not there's an actual story that's going to go forward from here and it's going to be great um, all of this is going to lead up to a major event coming out this summer um, I believe has been officially announced, um, but there's some magical stuff in the works for Marvel this summer, um, and we're really going to see some of these magic characters come into play, and, uh, you know, it was magical all along, is what I'll say. Yeah. Uh, it be exciting to see how all that kind of runs and turns out. Yeah. And, of course, lastly, I can't bring out awesome female characters without bringing out Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman Historia specifically, uh, being that this is done by uh, Kelly Sue uh, um, and also uh, Nicholas Scott on this awesome art. So we had a, a powerful female team 
on this issue, but it's also the story of how the Amazons got their home, how they get their power, how they broke off into the different collective groups of Amazons, and how they also come back together, and uh, the power that is women working together, uh, both as the gods and as the human Amazons, and just the beauty of all of that. And um, I always have to read this because it kills me um, a little bit inside with the happiness, but uh, there is this great thing um, that happens about at the end of the book. And she says, life is not a maze, not a game that can be won. There is much that is unseen and more that is beyond our control. We do the best we can with what we have and we leave to the goddesses all the rest. What do we have then? Our lives? Surely not. None of us is promised tomorrow. What is left from which to draw meaning? Only this, our capacity and willingness to love. We are born to die, but also to live and learn and hurt and grow, and all through it to love, to love our lives, our fellows, and when we are very brave, ourselves. Can you love as the goddesses love you? Have you the courage to bear the pain that will surely attend that love? Of course you do. We know, because we recognize our own. We know you. You are an Amazon. And that is the thing that you should remember all month long. Uh, if you are a female identifying comic book fan, if you have wonderful, amazing female identifying comic fans in your life, remind them this month, remind yourself this month that you are an Amazon and you should love yourself and love each other and, uh, just continue to spread that positivity and love throughout the world because this is what this month is all about and, uh, couldn't have said it better than been, been Kelly Sue at all, because that was fantastic. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And the, just the whole graphics in there are just stunning. Seriously, one of the most beautiful books. I'm, I would not be surprised if it wins another Eisner um, this year. And speaking of, just so you know, because I didn't mention it in the first place, if you didn't know, that the Eisner nominations yes. are open for your favorite comic book store. You've and already you, voted, so go vote. <laughs> thank you. Yes, you can find uh, links to vote for the Eisner nominations for your favorite comic book store all over the internet. If it's us, great. If it's not, I don't care. Whoever your favorite comic book store is, please tell the Eisners that you love them. If you don't know, the Eisners are the Oscars of comic books. They are. The Eisners are the Oscars of comic books, if you didn't hear what Very Matt just said. They are. It's our grand award every year. It's, it's the fantastic. the best thing that I could get. Every year they say this is a comic book store that celebrates the spirit of what comics are all about. That's what it is. It's not just the store that has the most comics. It's not the store that has the, the best exclusives. It's the store that celebrates the spirit of comics, that, that gives back that gives you a safe space to go to, that gives you the happy, warm feeling of comic books, that does have all of the cool things that you're looking for, that is just the comic book store that you call home. And you, the fans, get to nominate. Like, you, the customers, you, the people who are in the industry. Like, even, like, creators can say, like, I love going to this comic book store. Like, it doesn't have to just be a customer. It can be a creator. Um, and it's such a, a beautiful way to, to get that spirit going. And that's why I say, like, if it's Bad City great put bad city down but if you've been to a store that you feel like impacted your life ever if it's a store that you thought i'm gonna leave a google review for how great this store was or you took all of your friends there to show them just just drop a, a nomination for them because it means so much to that store to hear that they are making that difference because comic book stores try so hard mm -hmm. to be those community centers and to put that all together and just hearing from people saying hey we saw that you saw us means so much to a comic yeah. book store. So whoever you nominate, again, I don't care if it's Bad City. I'd love it if it was. But whatever store impacted you and made you fall in love with comics, let them know by nominating them for that award. And you can go to, if you don't know where to find it, uh, you can go to the San Diego Comic Con uh, webpage and you can find the Eisner nomination link through there or you can just type in Eisner nominations for Spirit of Retailer Award and you can throw that out. Yeah. And like you said, it's not always just to for like the biggest comic store or the fanciest one that you went into, but it is really important on, you know, what they do to the community, how they're involved. You know, I mean, you guys do so many events. Thank you. You know, and, and I'm able to come in here when I'm, you know, on duty just to, like, check up with them. And they've always been very welcoming for me to come in here. Some people are not too much. So it, it means a lot to us. And I even have people at work that, like, oh, yeah, Bad City. Like, I'm strolled by there all the time. Do they have this kind of comic? Do they have this kind of comic? Do they have this? And so 
it's just nice that like we are you know, everybody is welcome here and to come in here and then you know it's all shared in the community so it's all about not just having the fanciest or biggest comic store but how your comic store affects your community and how what impacts they're able to make you know that's really what they want to see and thank you for uh, you voted so you actually really know because you filled out the paperwork <laughs> um there are a lot of comics coming out this next week that you're going to want to check out for sure um speaking of scarlet witch she is back with issue three um i'm going to scroll down to my indies Ooh, monkey prince is ending with issue 12 rogue sun issue 11 part of your massive verse out this week uh bloodline daughter of blade number two predator is back again with a new number one uh, clear number one, TMNT, the Armageddon game, the Alliance number five, Know Your Station number four, Blood Tree number two, True Graves number five, Stoneheart number one, Children of the Black Sun issue three. I cannot wait to see where that is going. West of Sundown issue nine coming back to you. Black Tape number two from AWA, Almighty number two, Traveling to Mars number four. Very excited. Gospel number five. Uh, where are we at? Tales from Nottingham, number two. Assassins of Princess, number four. Space Job, number two. Get ready to laugh. Uh, Kilchella, number three. Little Red Ronin, number one's Ronin edition. So it's just a reprint of that number one of Little Red Ronin. Godzilla Rivals, Mothra versus Titanosaurus. Uh, to, to do, to do, those are some cool books. Betty and Veronica, Friends Forever, Rock and Roll. The Life and Death of the Brave Captain Suave, number five, and I have a feeling that's the end, and I will cry. Uh, the Gimmick, number one. Oswald and the Star Chaser, number one. Uh, the Trident of Aurelia, issue two. Super stoked to see an issue two already from Battle Quest Comics with Trident of Aurelia. Um, Big Ethel Energy Season 2, number three. Um, and so many more crazy things coming out. It's going to be a great week for comics as always. I did not mention this yet, so thank you for reminding me. We've got a bunch of comic boxes back in stock. Some that came out that are new this week. I'm going to take the sticker off. Actually, you can just turn it around yeah, so, we got so people can see this new graphic box that's out this week from Doctor Strange. Uh, that is super crazy. This is for the new Doctor Strange series that will be launching soon. Um, we also have a Venom Lethal Protector from the new Venom Lethal oh. Protector series. Um, and then we also have, since we were talking about Alex Ross, back in stock, the Alex Ross X-Men book. I'm so stoked. And Alex Ross, can we still submit for CGC for Alex Ross if they're interested? Until April. Until April, so if you have Alex Ross, Ross books that you want to get CGC signed um, and graded, make sure you bring that by. There is a ton, a ton of incredible creators that are coming up uh, this month and next month. So if you are somebody who wants to get those yellow label signature series graded books, make sure you come by. Two weeks for Chris Claremont. Two weeks for Chris Claremont. And Dave Gibbons. And Dave Gibbons. So Watchmen fans, Dave Gibbons. Oh, my God. Uh, get it in, bring it to Matt, especially if you are going to be somebody who wants a clean and press before you put that in. Make sure you get to Matt this week. Um, other than that, I'm super excited for all the comics coming out. I'm very thankful that you came, Jamie. No, I'm Thank very you. thankful for you guys letting me do this. I, I, I'm excited. Yeah. It was very much, so much fun. Grab that wine. Let's have one more. Yeah, uh, so we have just enough, I think, to, to, to finish this off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We are drinking Loka Tour, which this is their Cab Sab. Um, again, they're one of those buy one get one wines with Win Dixie. Just oh, you got you got some yeah. more. There you go. Um, Perfect. It's really nice, nice, not too sweet, not too tart. Yeah, uh, I really enjoyed it, sad. and I'm not like a red, huge red. I like reds, but I like sweeter reds. So for this, it was uh, enough for I'm gonna. Take a picture of the label, so I'm go buy it. I'm trying to convert <laughs> Jamie into more of a of a dry red person. We're working on it. It's getting we're, there. We're getting so, there. We have improved mature. so much. I know. I'm very proud. Um, but cheers! Thank you cheers, for joining thank us, you. and thank you for joining thank us. You guys. We'll see you next week. Bye.